Hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome back to another weekly schlag here at Highland Cycles. This is our little shop vlog where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff, uh, how to's, uh, reviews, tool spotlights, all kinds of good stuff. Every now and then we check on uh, Angry Zach, see what he's doing. Generally being pretty angry. Uh, I think today he's right now trying to figure out why the heck uh, this 200 uh, clutch is slipping with the recluse in it. That's not a bag on recluse. That is a bag on who knows what's going on. So he's doing that. Uh, I've got this KTM that's about to fall over. I gotta fix that. And uh, yeah, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Maybe hit the thumbs up, share this with a friend, all that good stuff. Let's get after it. <laughs> All right, so first on my lift this week is this 450 XCFW, I think. Uh, and all it's here for is brake bleed because the brakes do this. And they don't do anything. So um, I've shown, I have shown brake bleeds on KTMs lots and lots of times, uh, but why not do it again? It's been a while. So first things first, we're gonna take the cap off, check in there. Uh, looks like the level's actually okay. Um, but then we're going to go get our um, syringe. We're going to take a said syringe with hose, hook it up to here. And then I'm going to show you a little trick that I devised a while back to make sure that you don't get any air going back into that as we bleed it. Okay, right, guys, syringe, hose, onto bleeder, long zip tie. Now, what that does is it holds this up. And by the way, this is a pink hose. It's not Magura blood in there. It's DOT4. Um, but uh, so this holds this up. So when we crack this bleeder and we pump from up there, it won't, um, the air bubbles when they come out, well, hopefully we get air bubbles out. But when they come out, they're going to go whoop and they're going to stay up high and not be sucked back down. If you uh, take this hose and flip it down, and just have it hanging down here, like going into another bottle or something like that, you can get um, uh, air bubbles trying to go back into the system as you bleed it. That's no good. So uh, let's take the cap off and see if we can't move some fluid. Um, right now I'm pumping on the masher and I'm gonna hold it closed. I'm gonna release, release that. Boom, already. See that air coming out? We're already winning. <laughs> that was awesome. That moved air immediately and now the brake is already way, way, way better. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna bleed a whole bunch of fluid through because that fluid uh, up top, probably hard to tell, on camera, but it's pretty gross. So my guess is it might be the original fluid, no big deal. Uh, but, so we're gonna bleed some new fluid into it. Guys, quick plug for Motul RBF 600. Sorry, there's a label on it, but um, anyway, look it up, Motul RBF 600. Really, really good brake fluid. Uh, it's dot, what is this related? I think it's just dot four or 5.1, I don't know. It's, uh, let's see, I don't know. Look it up. It's either dot four or 5.1. It's good with all KTM stuff or actually anything other than a Harley. Uh, so it works great. And um, it's got a high boiling point. It's really, really good. Highly recommend this. Buy it, you'll like it. Uh, if you buy it using our Amazon link below, if you go to Amazon through our link below and then buy this, we get a little bit of money. You guys get your Amazon Prime shipping and all that good stuff and everybody wins. So now I'm just gonna pump a whole bunch of this through there, make sure it looks good and happy, uh, and then we'll move on to the next job. All right guys, so next on the lift is this 250 XCFW. Um, if you've been watching long, you might recognize it. I can't remember if this has been in any videos or not. It's been in here a lot. Uh, the family, 
that owns this bike. They own a whole bunch of motorcycles uh, for every, you know, one for everybody. Really awesome family. Have struggled with maintenance on their bikes for a long time, and I have tried really hard uh, to help <laughs> teach and show them what to do, and yet, still, this is the air filter that I pulled out of it, and you guys are not going to be able to feel this, obviously, but... flip it inside out you can even see dirt on the inside here I don't know if you guys can see that very well but <coughs> there's definitely dirt um, it's dry it has it looks like it had some oil on it but it's not like you can see my hands are not sticky like it should be and if we look in the air box um, it's not terrible. You can definitely see some dirt back in there, some dirt down in there, in the corners. Uh, they got some sort of fluid on the rim, which is good, but not recently. And uh, they brought this in for like a service and stuff to get ready for the year. But on the notes, it said smoking and idling rough. Or I swear. This is incredible. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that I started it. It did start up okay. Um, it feels like maybe it needs um, carb just adjusted a little bit because uh, it didn't want to idle without the choke. But uh, I noticed that there's almost no oil in it, at least from the sight glass. So let's drain the oil and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's more oil than I thought. That's good. It's super dirty though, which is definitely what I thought it would be. It's not as it, far from the worst I've seen though. So that's at least gives me some hope that maybe the motor's not completely blown up. So we'll let that drain. Let's pull the spark plug out and take a look at that. So the spark plug uh, doesn't look too, too bad. Uh, not all oil fouled, so that's good. Um, I'm starting to have a little hope that this motor might be okay and it just needs a little bit of love. That would be really cool. Um, it is a bummer that they're not taking care of their air filters, but uh, if we caught it early, we might be okay. All right, guys, that's what an air filter should look like. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm not picking you up because my hands are gross and I'm trying not to move the camera too much because uh, some of you guys are talking about my image stabilization, which I get is not that awesome. So, uh, but the bike seems to be good. I will bring you guys back in a little bit more when we get her actually running with this in it, but I think we're good to go. I had to clean the pilot jet out. It's been sitting obviously all winter, but other than that, I think we're good to go. I think they dodged a bullet. I think everything is actually okay. I checked the valves. Uh, they were in spec. Everything's to be good. They said it was smoking, but I don't see any smoke coming out of anywhere. So I think we're lucky. Um, they need to pay attention, obviously, to the oil level and their air filter maintenance. But again, I think they dodged a bullet. I'll fire it up and let you guys listen to it here in just a second. All right, guys, got the little 250 XCFW. We're running pretty good. Maybe. There we go. Happy with that. Uh, I got that pilot jet clean. Um, got everything taken care of. Looks pretty good. I think, it, like I said, I dodged a bullet on the whole air filter situation. But here is another one of their bikes. And yet again, not a very well oiled air filter. There's actually none. Oh, I don't understand. The situation i do not get it i have talked and talked and talked to these folks Whew, super frustrating again it looks like they're lucky it's nice and clean in there maybe they just like cleaned them right at the end of the season and didn't oil them 
before they put them away and they got lucky that they didn't go ride because it's terrible like no real grease ah, anyway I already started it. It runs good. We're going to check valves on it, uh, make sure everything's good. It's getting a full service. It needs uh, rear wheel bearings. Um, nothing else crazy. I'll bring you guys in if I find anything uh, too, too nuts about it. But otherwise, it seems like, again, lucky. Lucky that they don't go ride them <laughs> at the beginning of the year. And maybe they did it at the end of the year. I don't think they use no toil. Maybe they do, and it ran out and got dry. I'm not sure. Either way, we're putting real oil, uh, filter oil on it. I wanna make sure they're nice and tacky, catching all the dirt and happy because, yeah, don't wanna blow up motors. It's, uh, I make a lot of money when motors blow up, but it doesn't make me happy. All right, guys, so it is actually evening time. We got the boys down here. There's Erwin, uh, he's prepping his bike. Thomas is over there. Say ta hi, Thomas. <laughs> and, um, we are getting bikes ready to go race Weeby uh, this weekend. So both boys taking care of oil changes, air filters, getting ready to rock and roll. Um, I got to do the same thing to my bike, uh, but we have a Thursday night ride. So we're kind of trying to like get them really ready and ride them, kind of go easy on them Thursday night and then put them in a trailer and head out Friday to go to Farmington, New Mexico uh, for Weeby race. Ewan, what do you think about the bike after the motor rebuild? Much more. Yeah, a lot faster? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Turns out it needed that. <laughs> so pretty happy about that. Um, actually, You're interesting. You're... <laughs> what was that? You're welcome. <laughs> These are my children. Uh, it turns out Thomas is actually going to be upgrading from a 13 to a 16 YC250 uh, because he's selling this to his good friend, uh, Colt, and getting uh, a 2016 from our friend Robbie Noyles. Uh, it has a few... Newer parts, different plastics, stuff like that. It's just a little bit newer bike, which is cool. Um, yeah, pretty excited about that, guys. And so I'm going to put you guys down, put whatever, and get to work, and we'll get on to the next job. All right, guys, next on the list is this little TTR90. Uh, good friend Drew from the Mancus area uh, brought this in. He just wants it to run well so he can sell it. His kids are outgrown it. It's been sitting around too long. Uh, so it is time for us to make this run well. Uh, yeah, there goes that. Um, <laughs> uh, these things are super simple. I really like these bikes. Uh, they replaced it with the 110. I don't even know, does Yamaha, comment below, does Yamaha still make a 110? Uh, there for a while they didn't. I don't know if they do. Um, anyway, great little bike. Uh, maybe if you're in this area and you wanna buy a TTR90, this one's gonna be a pretty nice one. It's really pretty clean. Uh, it's just, you know, been sitting. So. Let's dig in and figure out what we gotta do and we'll make this thing good. I'm sure it needs a carb clean. All right, so first thing I found, it's not affecting the running of it, is this. Uh, these are unplugged, but that I believe is just a carb heater, which is weird to have that on this. I don't even know. <laughs> but I, I don't think it has anything to do with the running. So uh, let's go ahead and pop this off. It's kind of nice, you just take this uh, shroud off and you're right there. Um, but we've got um, two Allens here this and we can pop this sucker off. I already checked the air filter and it actually looks pretty good. Not all super narrowly. So I think, uh, hopefully it's just a carburetor situation. Also, this petcock is leaking. If I, that's why I put these on here to clamp this, to stop the gas. Cause if I take that off, it's just running out. So we have a rebuild kit for that. We'll take care of that here shortly. Get this carburetor off and take a look inside. All right guys, got our part. It's, Pretty gross. Uh, we're gonna disassemble and put into the ultrasonic and let that thing marinate. Hopefully it will be good. It's pretty disgusting in here. Uh, I gotta check and make sure all the passages flow. It's pretty weird. It's kind of almost looks like corroded. That's interesting. It's probably some nasty old gas but anyway put this in there and take these jets out we'll put that in there come back and get it all on there and see if we can't make this thing run well all right guys getting ready to change another tire and i'm going to try these things out these are uh new little tire spoons from drc they're not very long and i'm a little concerned i honestly i ordered them thinking they were going to be longer <laughs> uh 
so many jokes can come from that. But anyway, uh, we're gonna try them out um, anyway because they kind of look pretty cool. I like the profile of that, the part of the spoon, and then I like the little uh, comfort grip. So uh, I'm gonna try them out on this while also using the ones from Rabiconda. So we'll see if these things uh, work. I'll let you guys know for sure. Cue the time lapse. Well, there they go. Uh, they worked okay. They're definitely a little short for doing a lot of things on that, but they're actually pretty nice to have as extras to shove into the tire to help guide that bead down into the drop center. So I like them. Uh, and if you were gonna have some little irons at your house, like, and just do normal tubes, they're probably really great. So pretty cool, they're from DRC. You guys, check them out if you want them. Uh, I am definitely gonna get some of the big ones that have the same shape on them, and we'll try those out over here too. All right, guys, so um, <clears throat> I got the carburetor back on the TTR90, as you can <laughs> probably tell from what's going on here. Uh, I had to go further. <laughs> the carb, it's still not my favorite. Um, and we have a situation with the pet cock. Uh, it was leaking, so I took that apart. Unfortunately, we didn't have the gasket. But anyway, I was looking into things. I checked the valves because it seemed I tried kicking it. It started kind of not right it just wasn't it, you wouldn't take throttle it was super weird run for just a second then not and then off anyway so God, it's weird that would be the carburetor i mean i just cleaned it everything seemed okay at least okay enough to run uh and at least take throttle i was like that's weird so i checked the valves the intake valve was tight and i was like okay exhaust valve was okay so i adjusted that it's like man it just doesn't seem right like it just kicks weird and it just is running in a really odd manner so i was like you know what let's check the timing it would be weird but let's check the timing and so i did and it's impossible for you to tell but i got that at top dead center in there and we come over here you can see that mark let me get closer yeah. focus There we go. That mark is supposed to line up with that. It's not doing that. So we have skipped time somehow, some way. Do not know how. Uh, it's interesting. It doesn't really usually happen on these little guys, except for maybe if an adult was hot rodding it. Drew. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, adults end up hot rodding these things all the time and bounce around and having fun or whatever, like little pit bikes, and that's great. Uh, but sometimes things happen. So I bet that when we get that adjusted, this thing runs way better. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, just because it's kind of a cool. It's a little puzzle. It's weird and it's not normal. And I like that kind of stuff. So um, sometimes it drives you crazy. You want to throw stuff across the room. 27 millimeter wrenches. Things like that. But in this case, it was kind of fun to figure out. Uh, so I'm uh, going to get that retimed. And we're going to try it out and see if it runs. All right, guys. Next on the lift. So, well, I guess that is a lift, uh, is this 21 uh, TC250, full suspension service and training oil change. Um, also, <sighs> real quick cautionary tale for guys working on these. Um, I don't think this bike's been apart. It's really, really clean. It's really, really nice, which makes me feel even worse about what I did. Um, but uh, this is the right side plastic. I don't like Husqvarna plastic. I don't like the airbox cover. I don't like the way it goes together. I like the way it looks. It looks really awesome. Um, but if you've owned a Husky, one of the newer ones, I feel like you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but I went to take this right side off so I can flip the um, subframe up and get this. Anyway, I had to get this off. There's a grommet here. Super, super hard to pull because it's been on there for, boom, came loose. Didn't break anything then. But then as I was trying to get these tabs off their moorings on the subframe, I broke the plastic and I'm sad. Uh, mainly because I'm sad for him because now I got to buy him a new one. I mean, obviously I'm just going to get him a new one uh, from Husky, the right part of the whole thing, but uh, that's annoying. I'm not blaming Husqvarna, I'm blaming myself. I should have I don't know, I, I guess been more careful. I'm not sure how I could have been a lot more careful, but anyway, that sucks. 
Uh, but back to what we're actually doing. We're doing suspension service, got the shock all apart, valving, whatever. I want to talk about this. Um, this piece right here, this is the top out spring. And a lot of guys take that out. You do not have to run that. Um, we had a gentleman come in here who had taken his shock apart. The people before him, they had done some really bad things and completely screwed up a bunch of stuff in the shock. But they left this out <laughs> and he fixed everything else. He's like, man, I don't have that piece. You can run without that top out spring. Uh, you generally, in my opinion, need to uh, adjust valving a little bit to make that work better, but you don't have to run it. Um, I don't ch take it out if we're not changing valving, so I'm not going to remove it. Um, but you can take that out. It's not the end of the world. Um, and like I said, a lot of tuners actually do that on purpose. Uh, so this thing's super clean. He's doing this right. He's getting it taken care of before anything bad happens. So we're going to new seal, new oil, bleed, go back together. It's going to be awesome. Doing the forks too, uh, training oil and getting this thing back down the road. This guy's going to be riding this weekend, uh, just like us. And we are going racing this weekend. Very excited. So make sure if you're watching this, um, stay tuned for a big, nasty sand whooped out hammer down race video coming very soon so uh, i'll bring you guys back in when i find something else interesting we can frost the tips on it <laughs> all right guys so uh bleeding the shock all oh, that's normal but i just have to jump in here for a quick mail time a massive thank you to brian lynn right yes. to brian lynn who sent me a thousand gloves so thank you so much I really appreciate the care uh, <laughs> about me and my gloves. I will wear gloves. I have a ton of them now. I uh, sent me literally a thousand large gloves. Brian, if you're watching this, Zach does wear extra large, but uh, we can buy him gloves. So we thank you very much for these. Uh, he also sent me their version, his company's version of the pig mats that we use, the absorbent mats. So we'll be using those. So Brian, thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, the big mail time, I just have to show you, uh, is from a company called Mac Fox, who sent me that. <laughs> that is our new Mac Fox e-bike X1. Uh, I just put it together. I've been riding around just a little bit. I got to charge the battery up. Uh, this is going to be my new pit bike. I'm really excited. Um, it is a pedal assist e-bike uh, with little 20 inch tires. Um, kind of like a towny cruiser uh, headlight. I figured out how the headlight works, by the way, Zach. Um, the, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's got disc brakes. They're cable operated discs. Um, I'm going to be doing some videos on this. That is the agreement. They sent me this thing for free. Thank you, Mac Fox. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we're going to be having a ton of fun. I'm going to take this to the races this weekend and ride it around as a pit bike. Pretty stoked about that. Super psyched. So anyway, thank you guys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mac Fox. Thank you, everybody who watches these videos. I honestly cannot believe that uh, you guys care enough to watch all these videos and that I end up with uh, so much free stuff. Thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, so now I got to get back to work. <laughs> Bleeding this shock. Uh, then we're doing fork service and uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff, training oil and all that. And we'll get on to the next job. All right, guys, I got a good one here. Uh, this is a 2022 Beta 300 RR race uh, owned by a good friend of ours just up the road. Uh, so this bike had a weird warranty issue um, shortly after he bought it. Something came loose uh, in the power valve spring. I, I'm not honestly sure exactly what it was. Uh, I wasn't involved because Beta took care of it. Um, they warrantied it. He thought everything was good. So brought the bike home. It was last fall uh, going into winter. So he brought the bike home uh, and then um, parked it. He's got another bike, another beta. He loves betas, by the way. And he parked it, walked back out in the garage a little while later, you know, day or two later, saw oil on the ground. What? Uh, they're asking what four size and finish I want. Finish. See what they do. <laughs> That's a weird... Uh, so yeah, so he uh, noticed oil on the ground, uh, realized it was training oil, which it would be because it's a two-stroke, but, uh, and um, he thought, oh, I, maybe the clutch O-ring, because it looked like it had maybe, you know, splashed up on the thing. Anyway, so he got a new clutch O-ring, replaced it himself, no big deal. Um, and when you do the clutch O-ring, you only take this inner clutch cover off, so you can't really see past 
here, right? Uh, then he, you know, parked it, oil was on the ground. He got up underneath it and he found that. That is broken from the inside. So right there he stopped. He called his dealer. They're a dealer close to us. I'm not going to mention their name. You guys can figure it out pretty easily. Uh, it's the closest dealer, beta dealer to us here in Montrose, Colorado. So, and they're to the north. Uh, anyway, uh, they said, it's a long conversation, I think, but more or less it came down to, uh, it's out of warranty now, it's not our problem. And he's like, but guys, when you fixed it, you would have had to have seen it because you would have had to have this big cover off to replace anything in here. Literally anything, and it might have been the spring, I forget. But anyway, anything here, would have this whole cover would have had to come off, and you would have seen first that. Focus. Why is this not focusing? Hang on. Yeah, there we go. So you would have seen that, and then you would have been like, oh man, that's not good. And then you would have looked deeper and seen that groove. And then, if you're any kind of mechanic at all, you would have gone, huh, I wonder, oh! And you would have placed the warranty claim for a new set of cases. And the thing that got broken, or came off. So you would have replaced the warranty claim for new cases, uh, beta, being beta, and they're very, very good about taking care of their customers, uh, would have said, okay. And they would have paid you to replace the cases. Now. Warranty work does not pay quite as good as just normal work that comes in. We all know that. It's not, I mean, I don't know. Maybe beta is better, but from Ford to Yamaha, warranty, big job, big warranty jobs generally don't pay quite as well as you'd like, but they do pay and they pay very quickly. And it's, it's what you do as a dealer. So it's part of the fact of being a dealer. You get to make money selling the bikes and you get to make money fixing the bikes. So that dealer basically said pound sand. He was like, you gotta be kidding me. He kind of went back and forth with them for a bit. Uh, now um, they're just like, yeah, we're done. We're not doing it. So he brought it to me. He wanted me to take it apart, tell the internet about it, honestly, and see if we can't get something done. Um, and hopefully we can get beta to come in on this thing and get it sorted out because that's ridiculous. And um, yeah, the fact that they wouldn't help out is just dumb. So anyway, there's that. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, and then I have this other interesting situation here. So gentlemen, this is 690 KTM, uh, brought it in. He said, yeah, man, can you put new bars on? I fell over my garage. I think I bent the bars. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no problem. So we started taking a look and he bought this used and the risers, uh, anyway, I'm not gonna be able to show you from here on the camera, but I'm gonna take these apart and show you First of all, I don't think the bars are bent. Um, I think maybe the bolts are bent or anyway. And then the riser mounts are super <laughs> jacked up. So let's take these apart and see what we got. All right, guys, so pulling this off, this is how the spacer was. And let me show you. So on these KTMs, there's a channel like that sticks up, right? <clears throat> so the spacer, <clears throat> Hang on, Let's set you guys down. So the spacer is supposed to sit down over that and then go up into that because this this would normally go down. So this was how was this? Oh yeah, so this was flipped over <laughs> like that so it would be just not ah, it needs to go like that and it's simple guys <laughs> so that was not even close uh, anyway you'd think this would be easy <laughs> i think this would be simple let me get some blue stuck nuts for that And then this one, 
was correct in its orientation. It wasn't uh, upside down, but it was like that. <laughs> so I don't think his bars are bent. I don't even think the bolts are bent. There we go. Just like that. Looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna put the bars on and see if they're bent. It's really hard if, if it's just a super slight tweak in the bars, it's really hard to see until you get everything else straight. So uh, put those back on, we'll check in. I bet they're gonna be fine. All right guys, so <laughs> it fixed it. I didn't wanna show you, it's hard to tell on the camera whether or not it's straight or anyway, but getting that all sorted out, fixed it. So his tip over actually didn't do anything other than maybe jostle those uh, bolts a little bit and make it look more off but it must have already been off because it didn't cause the one to flip over upside down or the other one to turn 90 degrees. So that fixed that, super happy. Um, I think we might already be making progress on this beta. I've gotten some information of people to contact. So hopefully we're gonna get this thing taken care of for the guy. Um, and yeah, we are getting close to the end of the week here because uh, we're going racing today. We're leaving, my boys and I are leaving today. Uh, it's Friday to go down to Farmington, New Mexico and race a bunch of sand whoops. So pretty excited about that. If there's anything else I'll bring in, otherwise uh, it's gonna be an outro next. All right, guys, that's the end of the week, the end of the schlog. I'm actually filming this after the weekend of racing uh, because I forgot to film the outro, but uh, I also forgot a couple other things. That TTR 90, uh, I adjusted the timing uh, and it ran just a tiny fuzz better, but not really. Uh, after doing a compression check and checking on some other stuff and talking to the owner, we decided to stop, throw in the towel. He is going to give it to a friend. He was going to give it to a friend anyway, even if we had gotten it running. Now we're going to give it to a friend and tell them that they probably need to take the head off probably need to adjust, or replace a valve. I'm guessing a valve is bent. Uh, compression was a little low. It wasn't that bad, but it just would not ever run. Just off enough that we couldn't get it to run because the valves, I got them adjusted. The timing was good. Oh, and the cam chain was stretched so much that I couldn't really get it perfectly timed. Uh, so anyway, it's worn out. It had been through three of Drew's kids. No real adult beating, but lots of kid beating. <laughs> So uh, it was time for it to just go on down the road. I'm sure these people are gonna rebuild the motor together and have a family experience, learn some stuff, it's gonna be awesome. So anyway, thank you guys for sticking with me for this video, I really appreciate it. Uh, I think we're gonna get this thing fixed, the beta, which is awesome. Beta is gonna help take care of that. We got a lot of stuff coming for next week, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give us a thumbs up, share this with some friends because we are the best dirt bike channel on the YouTubes and we wanna grow and be giant. So I love you, Punk Rock Club, I love you the most. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you get out and spread the gospel two wheels. And as always, I hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes.